Hello. I don't know what happened. I just got cut off, <laughs> which was very strange, especially given the content, but maybe it was just some sort of like tripping one hour or something like that. I don't know. But I definitely want to finish reading this to you guys. <clears throat> so just bear with me. Hopefully Matt will be able to join back on again in a second. Hi, everyone. Tell us where you're from. No sound. Do you guys hear me or no? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hi. Someone say yes. Yes sound. Okay, good. All right, cool. Okay, so Matt should join back in a second, but we've got pretty much most of the people back. All right. Although SI plus DNA remains speculative and theoretical, potential advantages, I was reading off the potential advantages. So stability in very harsh environments and silicon-based polymers and potentially exhibit greater stability under extreme conditions. So very high and low temperatures. Extended molecular. Okay, here we go. Let's see if Matt is back on yet. All right, we'll give him a second. Um, this is from ChatGPT on the work that I was just talking about on the last uh, live that just got abruptly cut off. Um, silicone's properties could offer different bonding and molecular configurations compared to carbon. This might allow for a wider range of functional biopolymers with unique properties, enabling the design of synthetic biological machines and enhanced organisms. Improved information storage. The SIDNA structure could theoretically enable denser or more versatile information storage. He should be joining us in just a second now. He is. Hi, I don't know what happened. We just got totally chopped off. I think I think your live stream had an hour that, on it. That must be what it is. Okay. That's what I figured it had to be. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and continue. We can we can mm -hmm. keep going. Yep. Resistance to aging and mutation. Due to potential chemical durability, the SI DNA could exhibit reduced susceptibility to mutations caused by environmental factors. This might lead to uh life and aging more slowly or uh, as more resistant to genetic diseases caused by DNA damage. Uh, SIDNA could open new avenues in biology, allowing the creation of life forms of biological systems that exhibit traits beyond the capability of carbon-based life. So this would be silicon-based life. In nanotechnology, silicon-based biopolymers could be used to develop biologically inspired um, organisms that would be able to do things that other traditional and, and standard DNA would not. In summary, SI plus DNA is a theoretical model introduced that imagines uh, incorporating silicone into DNA structures to create enhanced or alternative biological systems. Potential advantages of SI DNA include increased stability, resistance to mutation, and applications in th synthetic biology. Though the concept is still largely theoretical, it does show promise for actual development. Robert, do you think that has anything to do with going into a more hostile environment during these CME type events where maybe we have some ability to have uh, to survive them? Do you think that you're that you're going coming across technology that may actually help us through some of these very disastrous things that have wiped out some of our past ancestors? I don't know. I, I just think the timing of this is very interesting, and I'll show you a picture of what it looks like in just a moment. But the introduction of, I'm just going to read the rest of this, the introduction of a new SI-based biopolymer incorporating silicone ions, sulfur, phosphorus, and hydrogen into biological systems could give rise to novel life forms. It would have six to eight nucleotide pairs uh, uh, compared to carbon-based that has two that rely on DNA and RNA. Below is a theoretical exploration of the types of biological life forms that could emerge from the synthetic SI biopolymer as their genetic material, focusing on the structure and metabolic pathways, environmental adaptation, and potential functionality. And what I'm telling you guys is I actually believe this is what the fifth dimensional human, which I would call Homo sanctus luminous, actually becomes. So this is 
not about building some organism and having some, you know, for all the people that are worried about transhumanism. No, I'm saying that this is what I believe humanity is going to evolve toward already that naturally. Sense. That makes sense. Silicon based life forms, core structure, instead of carbon as the fundamental element, silicon through SI ions could replace carbon in key structural roles. This change would fundamentally alter how life forms build their cellular structures, leading to more rigid and durable organisms. These life forms might exhibit rigid crystalline-like structures due to the stronger bonding properties of the SI-based biopolymer. Their cells can be more geometrically organized with less, uh, flex, flex, less flexibility, giving them a mineralized or crystalline appearance, potentially resembling silicon-based crystals or glass. But still, still enough flexibility to be able to have motility. Increased stability and resistance to environmental stress allowing these organisms to survive in extreme conditions like high temperatures, intense radiation, or environments with volatile chemical compositions such as methane or ammonia-based atmospheres. Mm. Extremophile life forms. Adaptability to extreme environments, the SI plus polymer would be far more resistant to hydrolysis, heat, radiation, and acidic or basic conditions that DNA making all life forms using this biopolymer ideal candidates for survival in very extreme environments. Such life forms could thrive in extreme heat. Silicon-based life forms could thrive in environments like volcanic vents, geothermal pools, and even planets with lava oceans, such as Lo or Io, uh, Jupiter's moons, one of Jupiter's moons. High radiation environments, the increased chemical resilience and denser genetic material would protect these organisms from the mutagenic effects of radiation, allowing them to live in radioactive environments like those found on Mars, the moon, or even near nuclear reactors. Non-water-based yeah. non environments. These life forms could evolve in non-aqueous environments, such as methane or ammonia-based atmospheres, like those on Titan, Saturn's moon. The new biopolymer structure would remain stable without the need for water, a requirement for carbon-based DNA. And then metabolically versatile organisms. Alternative... Metabolic pathways, silicon-based organisms would likely have different metabolic pathways than carbon-based life due to the unique properties of silicon chemistry. These pathways could involve, could involve silicon sulfur or silicon phosphorus biochemical cycles in which these organisms process silicates, sulfur compounds or phosphates as their primary energy sources rather than relying on carbon and oxygen as we do. So re relying on carbon like food and oxygen. So kind of interesting, it's, it's, right? No, there, this can't be a coincidence at all with the, the type of environments that are possibly present during some of these cycle changes. I mean, you re literally listed off the entire um, type of pathway we would need to be able to survive any one of these uh, hostile radioactive type of types of environments that we may have to have the essential components for us to be able to reach this superhuman state that we're going through that's needed for us to reach the next age. I think it's no coincidence, Robert, that you are stumbling into this and really exploring it. For instance, they could also metabolize mineral compounds or harvest energy from geochemical reactions deep within the Earth's crust or on other rocky planets. Multidimensional organisms, 3D genetic structures, the new SI biopolymer could support more complex three-dimensional genetic structures compared with the linear sequences of carbon-based DNA. These life forms might exhibit layered or folded genetic material that stars, stores far more information per unit volume, allowing for a higher complexity in cellular processes and potentially faster evolution and adaptation. Increased memory and intelligence, a more complex genetic structure could allow for biological computing capabilities, enabling organisms to process environmental data far more efficiently. This could lead to the emergence of biotechnological organisms with natural data storage capabilities. Increased longevity and resistance to aging. Anti-aging adaptations. I mean, it goes through all of this. It's like kind of mind-blowing. Synthetic intelligence life forms, self-assembling or self-replicating machines. Given the durability, stability, and high data storage capacity of the silicone-based biopolymer DNA, it's possible to imagine life forms that could blur the line between biology and advanced technology. Self-replicating organisms that function like biological machines capable of assembling new compounds and components from raw si silicone-based materials in their environment. So you could like, you're 
arm gets blown off, you could create a new arm, for example. Uh, planetary ecosystem shapers, terraforming life forms. So you could terraform planets uh, with this, it, it believes as well, it's, it's positing. Of course, all of this is theoretical. Metabolize atmospheric compounds, contribute to planetary ecosystems. Symbiotic and parasitic relationships with carbon-based life. That's an interesting concept. I mean, there's so many ethical sort of questions around this as well. Silicon-based microorganisms. The conclusion is that silicon-based biopolymer enables the creation of novel life forms with characteristics vastly different from traditional carbon-based organisms. These life forms could thrive in extreme environments, exhibit longer lifespans, and have greater resistance to aging and mutation. They could evolve alternative metabolic pathways, allowing them to survive without water or oxygen, and in conditions such as extreme heat, radiation, or non-aqueous atmospheres. These organisms might range from silicon-based mi microbes to intelligent biotechnology hybrids, and even potentially human beings, revolutionizing fields such as synthetic biology, terraforming, and biotechnology. Wow, all things that we may need in the near future. It, it, it is pretty mind-boggling, I'll say. So this is the, uh, I asked it to actually put the structure in place to see what it could actually look like. And this is what it came back with. Uh, that's only going one direction, but it forms a, a 24 strand DNA when it goes both directions with the weave. It's 12 in each direction. Wow. That's, talk about the possibilities of almost like a superhuman type of advanced world that we can consider for the future. And maybe that's one of the paths that pathways we're supposed to take. Yeah, I mean, I think all of this capability is just part of our current DNA structure. And it's about realizing it, and that's why it's coming in. Whenever, I've often said that ge geometry is a QR code for the unconscious or subconscious mind, right? So just you looking at this geometric form right now is going to subtly change you, whether you recognize it or not. You may not notice by looking at this form, new form you haven't seen before, unless you see it on my page, that it is actually having impact on your consciousness. And by the same token, it's impacting as well your DNA. Because becoming aware of things, when we live in a matrix of mind, the only thing that's necessary to make changes to the world around you is to become aware of new things. Once you change your perception, you change your world experience. And exactly. that is that I think is the key you know, driver here that we understand that all of these abilities are resident within us. The only limitations that are real are the ones that we consistently believe. Yeah, there, there are no limitations to where our path goes and the kind of advancement that we can do. It seems as though you're tapping into this integral future that we may have with understanding the advancements of where we may go, as well as understanding how we could even potentially protect our earth you mentioned terraforming in a way that we've never had the ability to do we have to protect we have to not uh see this as being a situation where we're simply animals that are at the at the mercy of whatever happens but we truly are like gods here that can have the ability to enhance ourselves in the way that we can get into a path a pass into a new future in which we have almost like superhuman abilities and i think that's incredibly interesting what you're you're uncovering in all of these uh, explorations of not only DNA, but unlocking these alchemical mysteries of all nature. Yeah, I, I definitely believe that, you know, people that, uh, that don't understand this and would start to realize that, okay, what I think I can do is what I can do. The only matrix that we live in is the one of our own belief systems. So if, Another put another way, consciousness can only expand to the volume of the cage of your belief system. Period. Yeah. If you if you don't think you can do something, you will definitely not be able to do that thing. Well, that's how magic works, Robert. Right? Yes, apparently. Right. That's how people. It's all about intention, and and your intention becoming your expectation. And this is exactly what physics says all the time. And this is what we're talking about is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. That you, you 
can't separate the observer from the observation. It's, it's impossible to do that. So I fundamentally believe that the reason why this is coming in now that can form a stable DNA structure is because just like whenever I get downloads of this type of stuff, right? This is a new geometric form that I discovered a few years ago. It comes with a new geometric understanding. And I was just with, uh, right before I got all this information, I was invited by Anthony James to his studio and he makes these big geometric forms and I posted about it you know, a couple weeks ago. He's a great guy. And we're, we're gonna work on a big art uh, commission for a major, major museum. And it's gonna be like 25 feet high. And we chose the structure of DNA. And the structure of DNA being based on the icosi dodecahedron stacked that then has you know, 24 strands going through it. And it's gonna be done in, in the style that he does of this artwork already, which is beautiful, but it's gonna use my geometric analysis and form for it. And um, I'm super excited about it, but I was, uh, as I was thinking about it, that's where I started thinking about this higher order DNA of these extra strands being silicone based. And I think, you know, we'll still have our carbon based DNA. The silicone based DNA, I believe is going to form around it as additional strands. There are no, there's no limitations on what our potential is. I think it's incredible what you're, you're unlocking right now within the codes, right? The, this codex of our DNA and our potential. Uh, and Robert, I certainly think that we are embarking on something that is potentially never happened in humanity. Um, we're becoming like superhuman. And I think that our future is very, very bright and very interesting. So people should buckle up because things are just about to get incredibly oh. interesting. Things are going to get wild. I, I know that. That much I know. Things are going to get wild, and we already feel that. Don't be in fear. This is really important. If you focus on your fears, you will actually create that outcome. Exactly. Try very, very hard. And, and whenever you start feeling fear, I gave a TED Talk on how to get rid of fear in your life. The way, best way I've learned how to do it is simply to be grateful. I found that I cannot list off the things that I'm grateful for in my life and also feel afraid at the same time. Fear and gratitude are very much against each other. They don't work in the same place. So if you can put your intention into the gratitude or the feelings of gratitude, you can overcome any fear, except for the fears that you believe you can't overcome. Your belief is the most important aspect here. If you think you can or you think you can't, you will always be right. So that means if you don't believe in miracles, you're never going to experience a miracle. Exactly. We have to realize that we're co-creators of our own reality. And it doesn't matter what is being told to you on TV or is what is what being driven to you through fear-based systems. We are our own superhuman that is waiting to awaken. And it's simply the only step we need to take is to believe in ourselves and what our potential is. Because we're all embarking on a journey that is truly going to unlock our greatest potential. But all that remains is the collective of humanity in that hundredth month monkey effect, right? At least just one out of a hundred has to, of the entire collective has to believe and embody this in them. And then we see the shift that we're all waiting on. That's why I love how your teachings are so based on love and non-fear based uh, principles that allow us to rise up and believe in our greatest potential in the universe, because we truly are more powerful than we have ever been told. Absolutely. So don't don't succumb to the negative self narratives, and and allow yourself. You know, people ask me all the time if there's the one thing you could do to change the world, what would it be? I, I said to help people see the connection between their own negative self narratives, and everyone always gets stuck thinking, oh, the world's against me for this, the cabal is this, or you know whatever it is. Uh, you could go down an entire litany of things, right? And and whatever you believe is happening is what actually does happen. Exactly. If you think the world is controlled by people that are, you know, using harp to create the hurricanes in the Gulf, that will be the reality you experience. Yeah, and it, it, we have to remember at the end of the day that we are part of a, a, a much greater divine um, set of rules that are governing cycles, not like you said, not some 
uh, it's elite groups that want to control humanity through fear and war and destruction, they're not really in control. That's, that's a, a false control system that isn't really real. It'll fall away and collapse like the fifth prophecy of the Maya when humanity finally realizes that they're the ones who are in charge of our collective destiny, not any elite groups that want to throw this fear-based system and make us believe that we're part of that because we're truly not. We're absolutely not. And it's really astounding because when you really realize that what the universe is, is a magnifier of whatever it is that you're feeling. And it will continue to push at you everything you're feeling. This is how, you know, I was on a uh, IG Live the other day, and I basically said, you know, when people complain about being surrounded by assholes, it's because they are the asshole. It's a reflection of their own inner, right? Exactly. Exactly right. right. So people that are always complaining about other people being, you know, arrogant are the most arrogant. People that complain about other people being frauds are the most fraudulent. People that complain, I mean, I, I could go through this whole entire list. This is life, guys. This is reality. Yeah. And it took me a long time to understand this connection, but it is. Exactly. That's why, why instead of chasing things, just become it. If you want to become successful, then embody that within yourself and believe in who you are and what you can achieve. It doesn't mean it's not going to be a hard road to get there, but it means you don't give up and you trust in intuition and the path because we're all part of something divine. We just need to remember it. Be the change you want to see in the world. Matt, thank you so much. Such a great pleasure. Can't wait to go to Peru with you. This is going to be an exciting trip, and I'm sure we're going to discover a bunch of stuff, but I also know that it's going to be an amazing um adventure also for each of us as we continue to find ourselves and there will be a virtual pass for this we're basically working on right now so stay tuned if you want to join uh virtually you'll be able to do that as well thanks very much and have a wonderful evening everyone thanks everyone. all the best see you in peru all right bye-bye